In this video, we're going to look at the Loft tool, which is part of FreeCAD's Part Design Workbench. Stick around. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm going to help you learn FreeCAD to design the things that you've imagined. The Loft tool is used to create a solid from two or more sketches. It does this by creating a smooth transition from one sketch to the next. I'm going to show you how the basics of the loft tool work, and then I'm going to show you some practical examples and talk about some gotchas at the end. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider buying me a cup of coffee through the link in the description below. Now let's get started. I'm using FreeCAD version 0.19 that was built on the 24th of January 2021 for this demonstration, and I'm running it on Kubuntu Linux version 20.04. The simplest use of this loft tool is to create a solid between two sketches. I use this technique in my video on designing the hearth joint when I created the teeth at the top of the joint. The loft tool is used when you cannot use another tool such as pad to create this solid. I have created a simple model that contains two sketches. One represents a square and the second represents a rectangle. There are a few different methods you can use for creating a loft. The first method is that you can start the loft tool and then add the sketches to it. So we'll do that. We'll start the loft tool by clicking on it. Then we will select the square as being the first sketch. Click OK. And then we will add the rectangle as the section. So we click on the add section button, then we select the rectangle and it creates a loft. In the next method, you select the first sketch, then you start the loft tool, and then you add the section to that to create the loft. And the third way you can do it is you can select all sketches in the model that you want in the loft and then start the loft tool and it automatically does it. The add section button allows you to add additional sketches if you need to. Let's have a look at the loft options before I move on to some practical examples. I have created another model which shows the effects of the options far better than this one does. So you can see with this model, I have five sketches that I have added to a loft. The ruled surface option has been enabled on this loft. What that does is it toggles between straight edges and curved edges. The default option within the loft tool is that all edges are curved. So if I turn this off, you'll see that I get a completely different looking loft than when it is turned on. The other option is the closed option. And what's supposed to happen when it is turned on is that the last sketch, which is this one, and the first sketch are joined so the loft becomes one continuous solid. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I don't normally use this option in my work because for the most part, the furniture I design is quite simple and it is difficult to translate some designs into wood. So I tend to keep them very simple. I do not use closed lofts. And so I've not actually seen this failing before. I asked some questions on the forum and yes, it is definitely a fault in this version of FreeCAD. It may have been there for some time, I am not sure. During that discussion, it was suggested that the way to do this would be to add the start sketch as a section of the loft. And when you do that, as I've just done, by clicking on the add section and then selecting the sketch is you end up with a loft that is visually closed. However, it turns out that the model itself is now broken, even though it doesn't look it. So it will start reporting errors if we do it like this. So it is not recommended that we close the loft in this way. Is there a solution? Well, yes, there is. You can do it in the part workbench. So what we'll do is I will delete the additive loft and then I will switch to the part workbench and start the loft tool. Now we need to add the sketches. So we'll do that. Unfortunately, you have to do it one at a time. 
And then what I can do is I'm going to turn on the create solid and the closed, click OK. It thinks about it and then we get our closed loft. Regardless of which loft tool you use, one in part design or the one in part workbench, the order in which you add the sketches is important. You can rearrange the order of the sketches and this will change the loft that is created. I will demonstrate this a bit later on in the video. Now we'll move on to creating some practical examples using the loft tool. Practical examples I'm showing here are very, very simple. And I'm sure there are other examples of furniture parts or tool parts that can be designed using the loft tool. If you've got any examples of that, please leave a comment below and let me know what they are. First example that I'm going to show you is of a faceted tool handle. The handle that I'll design looks like this. The handle will be wider in the center than it is at both ends. I've already created the sketches, so we can just simply go in and create the loft. So I'm just going to select the three sketches and start the loft tool. As you can see, the middle is wider than the ends. I've got the curved shape because I think it looks better than straight. However, if we turn on the ruled surface, you can see that it changes and becomes straight, but I think it looks better with the ruled surface turned off. The next example that I'm going to show you is a shaker style leg. Now, shaker style furniture tended to be very simple in design and their legs often were straight but had two tapered sides. Each leg had a straight section at the top which was used for the joinery and the taper started below that section. So I've created sketches that represent this and we'll use the loft tool to create the leg. So we'll select the three sketches, start the loft tool. Now, as you can see, using the defaults, the leg is curved, which is not what we want. So we will turn on ruled surface. And what that does is it straightens up the leg as you would have noticed on this edge here. If we turn it off again, it introduces a curve. What's not quite so obvious from this view is that the joinery section at the top is also curved. Now this will make it obviously harder to construct the geometry for the joinery, but the overall design, I think, looks a little bit better because of the curve in the bottom section. When it comes time to make this sort of leg, you could sand the joinery section flat or use a hand plane to do the same thing. And that will just give a little bit of extra visual interest in the leg that you wouldn't normally get from a shaker leg. As I mentioned earlier, these examples that I've shown you are very, very simple and are really just designed to show you how the loft tool works. But there are a couple of scenarios that I'm aware of that it doesn't quite work the way you would expect it to work. First one we've already talked about, which is that the closed option does not work, at least not in the version that I'm running. I would expect that this will be fixed in a later version of FreeCAD, so you'll need to keep an eye out for it. But at this point, I don't know when that will be. The tool handle that I demonstrated earlier is pretty boring, to be honest, and I'd rather design something that is a little bit more interesting visually. This is an example of what I was hoping to design, and I thought we could do it all in one lot. So I created sketches which represent the turn section at the front, which is the two circular regions here, and then the, use the same faceted tool handle that I did in the previous one. And if I create a loft for all of that, by selecting the five sketches, hit enabling the loft tool, what you'll see is I get something that looks like a vase or a display piece not quite the tool handle that I was looking for. So I thought I could fix this problem by adding some more sketches to better constrain the model. Well, didn't quite work. And I'll show you what I tried. So I created a, a second section at the front, which is close to the start of the faceted handle. And the idea was to bring the curve closer to what I wanted. So if we reopen the loft and add the new section, the new section gets added to the end of the loft, which obviously, as you can see, changes the design significantly. And in fact, 
it is somewhat hollow from the back. So what we can do is we can click on this section I've just added and then we can drag it up to where it should be in the loft. And the design of the loft changes again. In this case, I still haven't put it in the right place. I'll move it up one more, drop it in. You can see it's now together at the start, but the whole design has now changed again. And we are getting some interesting sort of designs out of this, but it's not what I want. So I, I thought I would add another section to constrain it. Turn that one on and we'll add that to the loft, which is this one here. Again, it's added to the, the end of it. So we'll just move that up into position. And you can see it is getting worse. So in the end, I decided I'm not gonna try any further on this one. And I decided to rethink the problem that I was having. And what I decided to do was create a new model and approach it differently. So what I've done is I have now split the model into two bodies. First body is the rear part, which represents the faceted part of it. The front part is the turned part, which then transforms into the start of the faceted section. So what we'll do is we will create lofts for both of those. So we will make the rear part the active body, select its sketches and create a loft from that and just accept the defaults. Then we will make the front part the active body and do the same thing. And then what we're going to do to finish the design is we will select both parts and use a Boolean operation to combine them or make a union of them. So you can see I have a, a single part which is the union of both of the lofts. And now if I wish I can add a fillet or a chamfer to the join. And we'll go for say a 10 mil chamfer. And fit that to screen. So you can see that it is possible to use the loft tool to do what I was trying to do. It's just that I was being overly ambitious in what I wanted to try. And I should have just made simple models and then fused them together as a union. Sure, you can see that the loft tool is a very powerful tool that provides opportunities to create interesting designs. The tool has some gotchas. And I'm sure there are other examples that I have not come across yet because my designs are so simple. If you have other scenarios where the loft tool does not work, please leave a comment below. Well, I hope you found this useful. If you like what you saw, please click the like button. Please leave any comments, questions or topic suggestions down below. If you're new here, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you stay up to date with my videos. I'm very grateful for the support that I've received on this channel. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider buying me a cup of coffee through the link in the description below. All donations will be used to improve the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.